The snow was falling differently that year. It wasn't a storm, just quiet flakes drifting over an empty tundra that no longer had enough hearts to warm it. Somewhere on a remote Arctic island, a place now called Wrangell, a single herd of woolly mammoths still roamed. Their ancestors had ruled continents, but now this was it. The last survivors of a dynasty that had outlived ice, predators, and time itself. They didn't know they were the last. No creature ever does. They still walked their ancient paths, still rumbled to one another under the pale sun, still searched for grass beneath the snow, grass that grew thinner every year. In their tusks, scientists later found the story written, layer by layer, a lifetime recorded in ivory. Each ring marking a season, each spike in nitrogen a sign of hunger, and in those final rings, a sharp rise, the unmistakable signal of starvation and stress. The world that had shaped them was vanishing, melting beneath their feet. And as the cold retreated, so did the mammoths. But why? How did a creature that had survived everything the Ice Age could throw at it finally fall in its last winter? Was it a tragedy of nature or a mystery of fate? To understand their end, we have to go back to the world they built and the kingdom they once ruled. Long before their final winter, the world belonged to them. From Spain to Siberia, Alaska to the Great Plains, the mammoth steppe stretched like an endless ocean of grass and wind a frozen paradise built on cold and balance. Here, herds of woolly mammoths moved like living storms, hundreds of them marching across the tundra, reshaping everything in their path. Their tusks plowed the snow, their feet churned the soil, and their hunger kept the land alive. Every bite they took mattered. By tearing down young trees and crushing shrubs, they stopped forests from swallowing the grasslands. And those grasslands, open, bright, and rich in life, fed an entire ecosystem. Bison, horses, reindeer, even the great predators like saber-toothed cats depended on the world the mammoths built. They weren't just animals, they were engineers of the Ice Age, the keystone species of their time. Where they walked, the world followed. And they thrived. For hundreds of thousands of years, through blizzards, droughts and shifting ice, they endured. Every generation passed its story forward, written not in words, but in tusks and footprints frozen in permafrost. They were built for the cold. Thick fur, blood that stayed warm even in the Arctic wind, and tusks long enough to break through frozen rivers. To them, the Ice Age wasn't a curse. It was home. But home doesn't stay the same forever. The cold began to lift. The grasslands they shaped started to change. And with that change came the beginning of their end. The Ice Age didn't end with a crash. It ended with a drip. For tens of thousands of years, glaciers that had towered like mountains began to melt inch by inch. The world warmed, not all at once, but fast enough to break the rhythm life had always known. The mammoth steppe, that vast kingdom of grass and wind, started to die. The frozen soil softened. Moisture turned the plains into swamps and grass gave way to moss, shrubs and trees. The land that had once fed millions became patchy, unpredictable, empty. Mammoths had spent millennia mastering the cold. They were armoured for blizzards, not rain. Their bodies, their diets, their instincts 
all tuned to a world of ice and grass. But now, their world was turning green, and it was killing them. As the herds dwindled, their impact on the land weakened too. Without them trampling young trees, forests spread. Without them grazing, grasses vanished. The balance broke. The steppe began collapsing in on itself. And with the mammoths losing their world, their predators, their food, and their space, something else entered that space. Something that would change everything. When we arrived, they had already begun to vanish, but our arrival made sure they never came back. Around 15,000 years ago, the first humans walked onto the frozen plains of Siberia and North America, armed with fire, language, and something no other predator ever had. Strategy. We were smaller, weaker, slower, but we could plan, we could talk, and together, that made us the most dangerous thing the mammoths had ever faced. To the mammoth, we must have seemed harmless at first, small shadows moving across the snow. But those shadows carried spears, and they didn't just hunt the weak or the young, they hunted intelligently. For a species with slow birth rates and long childhoods, even a small increase in adult deaths was catastrophic. One successful hunt could mean meat for a tribe, but another lost matriarch for a herd. And with every hunt, the balance tipped further. But humans weren't monsters. They also revered what they killed. In caves from France to Russia, we painted them. Colossal shapes, tusks curling like storms, drawn not as prey, but as gods. We carved them from bone, carried their images as if they meant something sacred. We feared them, we depended on them. And in the end, we helped erase them. Still, it wasn't just us. The cold was leaving, the grass was dying, and hunger was everywhere. We were just the last spark in a fire already burning low. But even as the mammoths fell across continents, they didn't all vanish at once. Some fled north, across the land bridges, beyond the reach of men and melting ice, to islands at the edge of the world. There, in isolation, a few small herds endured for thousands more years. It happened fast, not in human use, but in the blink of geological time. Across the world, the Ice Age giants began to fall. Not just mammoths, but mastodons, giant sloths, saber-toothed cats, camels, and more. 35 entire genera, gone in just a few thousand years. Creatures that had survived two million years of freezing and thawing were erased in what scientists call a geologic instant. In Eurasia, it was slow, a staggered retreat, pockets of survival lasting millennia. But in North America, it was sudden. Within a span of 3,000 years, the mammoths were gone. The grasslands that had depended on them began to collapse too. It wasn't a single cause, it was synergy, a perfect storm of change. The climate warmed, 89% of the mammoth's range disappeared. Humans spread faster than ever, hunting, building, burning. And isolated herds couldn't recover, they were trapped between worlds too slow to follow the shifting seasons, too specialized to adapt, too exposed to a predator that never stopped moving. The giants died, and the earth itself changed. The grasslands they had shaped turned to forests and bogs. The permafrost, once locked by their trampling feet, began to fall. 
Carbon that had been frozen for millennia was released, changing the planet's climate forever. The end of the mammoths wasn't just a loss of life. It was the beginning of a new world, one smaller, warmer, and quieter. But not every mammoth fell. A few escaped the collapse, carried by chance and ice to a tiny refuge far to the north, an island where they would outlive their kind by 6,000 years. While the mainland went quiet, one place still echoed with the sound of mammoth feet, Wrangell Island, a windswept, ice-bitten world off the coast of Siberia, a place where time forgot to move forward. Here, a few hundred mammoths found refuge. They grazed the frozen grass, drank from tundra streams, and raised calves under skies untouched by human fire. For 6,000 years after their kin had vanished, this small herd carried the weight of a vanished world, living ghosts of the Ice Age. Scientists later learned their story from the ground itself and from their bones. The Wrangell mammoths weren't sickly or broken. They weren't riddled with mutations or dying from inbreeding as once thought. In fact, they had adapted their small, isolated population had stabilized, quietly managing to survive despite the odds. And yet, one day, they were gone. 